and good evening and welcome to the greatest small football show in town. It's the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show here at Hub City Deli. What a great place to have it. We got a good crowd of Jackson Christian supporters and of course we've got two of my favorite people here with me to start off the show. You know we always have coaches, Coach Hooper and Coach Buller to hear. We're going to discuss all kinds of things and then we've got a couple of the great players. Not just good, these two gentlemen are great. They have contributed to this program for quite a while. And that's C.J. Carey and Cooper Cantrell. And we'll tell you about a little interesting distinction that Cooper has. And uh, I don't know if he is the youngest child, but I do know there are some older, older siblings too. And those are some good things to know. We want to thank Hub City Deli for hosting this show. And, of course, Jackson Christian and their booster club. What a great group of people. And we'll remind you. You still got time to go with my famous statement people joke me about. You got time to call five people. You got two of the most brilliant coaches around, good guys, great teachers. They are here tonight. And if you'll call five people and get them tuned in, because we've been having great crowds anyway, uh, you can find this on Jackson Christian's Facebook, but it's also on the Booster Club's Facebook. And I believe Worthy Road Studios has it too, but. You need to pass the word out. We still got people. I'm getting texts from people that watched us last year when we had a little different situation, and they're forgetting that we can do. And I want you two coaches to encourage people to go to Jackson Christian's Facebook and to the Booster Club Facebook and watch watch these young people. Absolutely, it's a it's a great opportunity for those guys to be able to to be seen by their. It's really a big thing for their family that don't live close and. Um, they get the opportunity to see them and, and expose, get them exposure uh, even more than just being at the games. And, and, see, and it's awesome to be able to be here tonight too, Coach. Coach, what do you think about it? It's worth watching it. Yeah, yes, sir. I think it's just what he said for the, for the kids, for the, for the program himself, uh, just getting it out there and, and allowing those people that can't make it to the games, that can't be here on a consistent basis to, to get an idea about who these people are that you're hearing on Friday nights. Coach Buller, before we get into preparing for our opponent that's coming up and a little bit about the past game that didn't happen, but we, we were ready to play but between you and Coach, Ho Coach Hooper. Let's talk about what is happening now. Did we have a JV game last night or did rain get us? No, we, uh, we did not have a JV game. Um, we have um, some co – just left from over, over at the field and we have flag football going on right now. Um, it's our K through uh, third grade league, and there's a lot of athletes over there running around, a lot of Jackson Christian folks, a lot of community folks out there, and, and there was a good crowd over there, Coach, before uh, we came over this way. So just flag football um, tonight, but we did add a middle school game tomorrow, um, and that will be against Chester County at 7 o'clock at our place, and we're going to try to have our eighth grade night um, since our Gibson County game got, got uh, canceled. So we're going to try to get these eighth graders – um, their eighth grade night against Chester County tomorrow if the weather will allow us to do that. So that is one addition to the, the schedule for us, um, along with fifth and sixth grade football on Thursday. Um, and then our middle school is on the road on Thursday. So a lot happening, a lot going on, a lot of opportunities to come out and see these guys play. And that middle school season is kind of winding down, and this was a game that, that we're hoping to get in tomorrow for these eighth graders. Really need to get those games in. Got to ask Coach Hooper this. You depend on skilled people, and obviously we got to have the great blocking. Nothing happens without great blockers. And yes, my sir. buddy Gage Borkin will tell you he'll take all the blocking he, he can get, and he, he's a fine young man that realize. But these flag football games, this is very important. It, programs are built. The starting building is the fundamentals these kids learn in flag football. Yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing, like you said, it, it, it talks about fundamentals. It talks about teamwork, just being a part of a team. Uh, and building those relationships early on uh, and, and getting that exposure uh, just to athletic moves. A lot of these kids just sit at home and, you know, don't do anything. So, so getting out there, getting active, getting involved in something like this um, helps not only build our program but build, you know, other programs around, around the area. So. Well, the, the young men are built at Jackson Christian School, and that's not to ignore the young ladies are too, but we build young men not only for football but, to compete in life, and it really starts down there. There are life lessons I learned in the old city flag football league that I wish they'd put back in, but the city uh, recreation department ceased to have that, and Jackson Christian is doing a good job by having flag football. And you look at a successful program, I don't care if you can go to Alcoa up the other end of the state, 
Yeah, they've got a flag football. Absolutely. So does Maryville. Absolutely. You come into Middle Tennessee, I could name you several schools. I was at White House Heritage, but what, the old regular White House, when they were dominating the state, all the kids started in either the first or second grade in flag football. And you come this way, the dominant teams have a good flag football. And this is our first year, Coach, doing it. It's a dream we've had. Uh, adding our turf a couple of years back has allowed us to have way more activities on our campus. And, and we're hoping this is something that people hear about, want to be a part of it, and it's going to be bigger and better next year. So we just want we, – we're in week two of it, and we're excited to have those kids on campus. Now, let's go back and mention the fifth and sixth grade. We haven't – brought out who's coaching those because first of all i admire those gentlemen it takes a lot of patience and we've got some volunteer coaches for absolutely the um the lee johnson is our head coach yes um nathan nash dad of a couple of our uh, football guys and has a son on the team is coaching and then um they've got a couple more coach that, that i have not met personally that but there's there's four or five coaches out there um helping them on a on a nightly basis and they do a great job trying to teach the game and to, to develop those kids and get them ready for middle school. Now, now coaches, y'all weren't here when Nathan played at Jackson Christian, were you? No, sir. Believe it or not, Nathan would run you over. He was a tough nut. I know where Tacker gets some of that stuff from, and uh, his grandfather gave him some of that, too. Uh, his grandfather, before he broke his leg, was probably the best player at Tiger Junior High School one time. But those are great coaches. Now, who's helping us with the middle school? I know a couple of my favorites are over there, but Coach Hooper, I'm going to let you talk about the middle school. So, uh, Coach uh, Josh Wyatt is the head coach. Uh, you got Chuck Ray, which is the office coordinator, and Todd Lumley is uh, over there helping out, and, and all them guys. Uh, great knowledge of football, been around the game for a long time, and, and just like our elementary school coaches, uh, it takes a special person to be able to coach the younger kids. I, I've, I've tried it myself, and it, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of dedication, and, uh, you know, those guys do a great job. Uh, I think they're 2-0 and on the year. Um, you know, obviously still looking for games uh, to replace some of the ones they've lost uh, and, and able to pick up some, but they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, getting after folks and, and uh, teaching our kids, you know, what it means to be an eagle, what it be, means to be a man, um, and, and and doing a fantastic job of that. So. Of course, I know a couple of secrets. One, on Todd Lumley, <laughs> once upon a time, Todd Lumley sit in the seat I'm sitting in and the one I sit in proudly on Friday night. He was a broadcaster. I was his color man back when I was, I was coaching junior high football at that time for I got promoted to the high school. And uh, – Todd's a great play-by-play -play man, but he's had a great baseball coaching career. He's coached football, and he helps with the baseball, too, just like Coach Bullard does. Yes, we got one of the best coaching staffs around here in, in that. And, Coach, I was supposed to ask you, and I'm, I'm kind of jumping around. I'm going to get back to the kids. What other sport do you coach at Jackson Christian Inside Football? So uh, I do track. Um, I help out Coach Irv, Coach Palmer. Uh, and I'm, I'm the distance guy, believe it or not. Uh, but but uh, we, we all combine it, tag team it, and, uh, and, and uh, just try to get our kids bigger, uh, faster, and stronger, just like, just like you would in a regular offseason. It just gives us another opportunity to compete in the offseason that, that we really enjoy. I love that track. It gives kids running a chance to stretch leg. The linemen and people like uh, Tacker and now Chance is playing baseball, but – you, I thought you might coach the shot and the discus and no, those things. No, so I, I don't. I, I've seen them guys. Uh, seen them guys do it, but I, I get dizzy watching them because they're they're constantly working on their spins, their throws, and uh, I, I do not do that. I, I, I'm 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 a I'm more of a run form technique guy. Coach so. Bullard, you wasn't a pole vaulter when you were in school, were you? Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> that was that was that was a bad question but we play also we've got to remember with the middle school we've got two games this week yes sir you don't want to miss either one of them and of course the uh tomorrow night is eighth grade night i can't emphasize enough because that's kind of like one of those rites of passage because those young men either a few maybe at the end of this season will come up with the varsity all of them will be with the varsity by next year yes, and, sir. and again I'm, I'm sure each year it comes different. We don't put kids in physical situations. I, I've been very proud of y'all. I've observed this program for several years. And if a young man needs a little weight lifting and conditioning in the off season, 
they're not going to put him in a case of where uh, you got an eighth grader going against a 270-pound senior. And these two coaches, along with Coach Palmer and the other coach, thank you, gentlemen, for taking care of those kids too. That's what we're in it for, Coach. We're we're in it for kids, and and we want we want kids to get experience, but we want them to get the right experience, and we don't want to push them away from football too soon. And we don't do everything right. We're not a perfect program, but that we strive to. Uh, have our kids' interest, uh, best interest at the forefront of everything that we do, and, and Coach Palmer does a great job with that. We do, and, and the I call it the biblical effort. God realizes we're all going to make mistakes and fail, but if we've got the right heart and can correct them and go through, well, y'all coach football like that. Mm-hmm. They, they don't get down on kids. What they do is they teach correct technique. If we don't get it the first time, they have patience, and, and they work on it. And, and like I said, the the atmosphere, I just love it. And um, matter of fact, the either one of you, most important fundamental for a lineman to learn first. What would be the first, or maybe you got to learn a combination of them. I was a back, so I'm having to ask two experts. Uh, fundamental for a line to learn first? Yeah. I, I think for – I want to say aggression, and I don't know if you can consider that a fundamental or not, but I think you have to have somebody that's going to be aggressive in what they're doing and not afraid to fail. Um, you can teach technique. You can you can coach up wrong things, kind of what we talked about. But a guy has to be aggressive and actively wanting to to accomplish a task. Uh, so that's what I would go with as a, as a first fundamental. Then after that, we can work on the little in, 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 uh, intricacies of – what it takes to be, you know, the, the proper step, the proper hand placement and hip placement. Coach, what about you? I, I agree 100%. You got to have some nasty in you first. Um, if we're having to coach that, uh, we're a step behind. Um, but we, we coach that and then the eff- the attitude and the effort, um, we, we hope that's there. And then it's just the, the footwork. Um, and for defensive line especially, for me, it's footwork and hand placement. Um, and, and we're not always going to be bigger, faster, stronger than our opponents. So we have to have the right technique to survive some of those double teams and some of those bigger linemen that we're going to go up against. Um, and in our league, Coach, night in and night out, they, we're going up against fronts that, that are bigger than us, and, and that's fine. We're, we're okay with that. Um, we're, we're prepared for it. We know that. Um, we got to beat them with technique and, and some of that aggression. So. And I think, too, uh, kind of just to play off of what you said, eventually somebody's going to give up in the game. Yep. You have to keep coming back play after play after play and make that other person give up. Would this be a fair assessment? I always told my players that we have to be like Daniel in the lion's den. No fear. Right. No fear, and we have to believe. And that's the commitment. You have to believe in your team and what's happening, and you cannot fear the opponent. You can respect him, but you don't have to fear him. I agree with that. And, and that's the first thing is, is believing that you can do your job, but also believing your teammates are going to do theirs. So you don't have to try to do too much. Um, you just do what you're taught to do and coached to do and have the trust and the belief that the guy beside you is going to do it from top to bottom. And then and then respect your opponent, um, but but don't ever have that, that back of your mind that, that you might not be good enough that night. And I think never. this team this year really embodies that. that you know, yes. they just they don't care who we're playing. Hey, it's, it's, we're going to go out there and play. You know, that, uh, I, I, don't think they, I don't think they get up or get too high or get too low, and I think that's a sign of a good team, even though we're a young team. Teams that can be pretty even kill are usually successful in the long run. Gentlemen, let's switch gears before we take our first break. Harding Academy was supposed to be the opponent last week. We would have rather played, but we understand their situation with COVID, and I think their roster had gotten down to, by the time we were ready, playing 14 healthy players. And uh, actually, even one of their assistant coaches, Shannon O'Brien, had COVID also. Uh, Shannon and I are old friends from our days at, at Northside, but – Talk a little bit about the kids being ready. Yeah, we had a tough loss that we could have easily won. You changed about four plays in that game, and, and we're not talking about plays that were out of creation. We had – this is that Millie Micron I always talk about sometimes. Four plays by Millie Micron, and it's actually Jackson Christian School 14 and ECS 7 for sure could have been worse. But, unfortunately, those things didn't happen. Talk just a little bit about the mindset and Harding, and then we'll talk about the game coming this week. Well, uh, you know, we want we want to go next play mentality. And after that game, we um, against ECS, we we immediately started looking ahead to Harding and, and preparing. And coaches met, and you have a plan in, and then you get the news on Wednesday um, that that they're going to have to cancel. And, 
and really there's nothing you can do about it. Um, you can be frustrated, you can be whatever, but you got to move on. We tried to find somebody, but on that short notice it was tough, and um, we just had to, to move on, and, and it gave us some time to start prepping for this week. So um, the kids were not happy about it, but they understood, and we could easily be in that situation uh, sometime this year, and we hope and pray that we're not. But, you know, now more than ever, you got to be able to move on and, and roll with whatever's given to you. And, and so that's, that's where we're at. Coach, you've got – one of the toughest jobs you got to make. That's a timing offense for a lot of – we do have some power. We run the football, even though we look like one of these spread, throw them up teams. We're, and I think, goodness, we're not in Mike Leach's category with uh, the, his offense. But how do you keep your timing when you have this longer time off? Uh, I think the, you know, uh, the big thing is during practice, you just got to keep repping it. You just got to keep – like you said, we had to refocus, uh, control what we could control, come back to the basics. And, and that's just something you got to constantly rep. It's, it's, it's the basic little things over and over and over again uh, until it becomes a habit and, and the second nature. Absolutely. Guys, uh, anything you want to say before we take our first break? Because when we come back, we'll talk about the opponent that's coming up afterwards. We'll get uh, start with the kids, and we'll have a little longer segment than we normally do at the end. We'll talk about some stats and uh, of course, as an old coach, and, and these guys can laugh at me and tell you, we'll let them talk about it. The only stat I care about, I know parents care, is who got the W at the mm -hmm. end of it. Sorry. And, uh, you know, did we get better? Because sometimes you don't get the W, but it's important to get better. Fair assumption, and you all can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But we'll Absolutely. talk about it because we've got some guys with some good stats. We've got some guys contributing. And I'm going to let you think about it. Who are some guys that may not have started a game because we've had some guys that came off the bench. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a, a young man I know, Lance Rowland, I look up, and, you know, I'm used to seeing Lance on the uh, kickoff return team and doing some other things. Man, he catches a pass out there in the flat as, as a wide out. And uh, kids like that that come off, we need to mention some of those young people. We're going to take a three-minute timeout, a three-minute timeout, and when we come back, we are going to have our first guest, and that's going to be C.J. Carrier, the fine tight end who has been with this program a while. You will love talking to him. And then after him, we'll have Cooper Cantrell, who uh, I have to watch what I call him sometimes because I coached a young man whose name was almost the same up in Kingsport, Dobbins, Bennett. And sometimes he and Campbell Scott get called by the two kids. That, But I feel like I've known them for years. We're going to take that three-minute timeout, and when we come back to Hub City Daily, more of the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show. Hello, folks. This is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warranty on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday and Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. We are a team, a team composed of highly skilled physical therapists with new school treatment approaches and old school customer service principles. We are a community presence because we know our foundation rests in relationship building and involvement. We are leaders in this industry and we're putting in time daily to develop that aspect of thinking. We're more than a business. We're a team composed of individuals governed by a set of core values. We're more than a physical therapy company. We're a movement in the profession. 
We are your premier physical therapy team in West Tennessee. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. At Lonnie Cobb Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. And we are back. I didn't turn my own microphone on. Jackson Christian football recap show. Coach Bullard sitting in here with me and Coach Hooper over talking to Cooper Cantrell. And I'm going to let you introduce the guest because I am honored that he is here tonight because he does such a good job and uh, he's not out there looking for the pats on the back just to do a good job. So, Coach, we got senior uh, C.J. Carrier here with us tonight. And C.J., does a lot for our football program. And he um, was working at, at tackle to start and then, um, you know, found out scheme-wise and, and what we wanted to do. Um, we asked CJ if he would play tight end, and, and he's done it well. And he accepted his role. Um, he's a kid that will do whatever you ask him to do. Um, and, and we are proud uh, to have him and, and wanted to bring him here tonight and get another senior on the show and, and let everybody meet him and, and see and see his face and um, just hear from C.J. Carrier. Yeah, these are the kind of young men that, uh, folks, if you will entrust your children to Jackson Christian School, they will turn out fine young men like this guy. C.J., I'm going to skip into, and, and Coach, you've got the next question because I'm going to go a little strange on the first All question. Right. How tough is it? to hook a defensive end and get him turned in so that Cam can run outside? Um, it's pretty tough, but uh, I'm, I'm confident in my speed, and I feel pretty quick, so I'm, I'm confident in it. And, uh, you know, and that sounds like a man, and he's done a good job and uh, not getting called for holding and stuff. Like, if I had to block him, I'd have to hold. <laughs> that, that's the thing. Coach, you got the second question yeah, for Yeah, I, I think it's coming, and, and we had an opportunity. I think it was in the – the St. George game, uh, CJ went out on a on a little go route and kind of held up a little bit and may may have had a chance to score if he keeps going. What what would you do, CJ, if if you do catch a touchdown? What what would be your? I know we can't celebrate, uh, but but what would be your reaction? When, how excited would you be if that happened for you? Um, well, I'd be pretty excited, but I I, don't know, I consider myself a pretty classy guy, so I think I just walk off the field. That is a very sound answer. <laughs> I figured that's what was coming, yeah. Coach, but I had to ask him. Well, like I said, we told you we produce young men, not not boys. They've passed that stage, and we, we do that. How long have you played in the program? Back to elementary school? Uh, yes, sir. I started uh, in sixth grade when I came here, and uh, I've played my whole life. That is great. Uh, a, a career man at Jackson Christian yes, School. Love to have them like that. Let, let's deal with uh, – a few things. Your favorite thing about football, and um, I better toss this in too. Now, CJ plays more than tight end. He can play defense too. Well, tell about the, all the different positions that you have played since you've been with the team. Um, I've kind of played everywhere. Uh, D-line, offensive line, so tackle and guard. Uh, in the summer, I was working a little center, and now I'm playing tight end. Um, I... Uh, I play wherever they need me. Well, I was going to say, I was told by someone that will remain anonymous that you could even play linebacker if you needed to. Uh, yes, sir. I play uh, outside linebacker, too, so it's not that much different from middle linebacker. So okay. I think I do it. As, that is great. Now, the favorite drill you have at Jackson Christian School, when uh, whether it's a blocking drill, a tackling drill, everybody's got one. Um, I like one-on-one -on -one pass rush. It's pretty fun. That is fun. 
Now, do you you like the swim technique or you just bull rush them? Uh, yeah, I definitely like using my hands, so different spins and stuff. That is good. Coach Buller's pretty good at that stuff, isn't he? Yes, sir. He really is. Coach, your turn. Uh, let me let me think of something. I I think that um, I think he could play anywhere. Um, I I'm excited to uh, to get him um, in that role of tight end, but also he is one of our guys that can come in um, on the defensive line, and and really I can put CJ anywhere. Um, he's he is good with his hands and good on pass rush downs and. He likes getting after the quarterback, and that's a that's a big thing for us, especially third and long passing situations. Um, he he was in there um, in the St. George game uh, late, um, getting some pressure on that quarterback and enforcing some some bad throws, and that was big for us. In your career, what's your favorite play that's happened that involved you, or it could involve one of your teammates? Because we've had some young men that actually they threw the block and somebody scored. Or what's been your favorite play, or a couple of them that you remember? Um, my favorite play would have to be last year uh, against USJ when Alden kicked that game-winning field goal. Everybody was super excited. And just watching it from the sidelines, even though I wasn't playing, was just super fun. That, that was a great play. And uh, I got a little loud on tape. But <laughs> I've got people that listen to it for the first time. And you can go back. It's archived on Worthy Road Studios. But uh, that is a, a great one. What do you want to accomplish with the team this year? Um, I want to go as far as we can. Uh, I think if we stick to our game plan, we could go real far. And I'm excited to see where this team can go. You do. Now, what about attitude? Does attitude really affect winning? You know, we had a caller on the radio show a couple of weeks ago, whoa, oh, attitude doesn't have anything to do with it. Does attitude and chemistry have something to do with it? Um, yeah, I think it has something to do with it. Um, um yeah. Uh, yeah, it definitely has something to do with yeah. it. Um, yeah, CJ's gotten some of the time. I've gone through one round of questions. I'm doing a little you're, different You're ones. putting the, the heat on him now. <laughs> well, tonight. I know this young man. <laughs> I believe in this young man. Now let's have some fun with it. What other sports do you play besides football? Um, just football, but uh, I play track as well. Coaches makes us do track, and so I throw the shot put in discus, and I have a lot of fun doing that. We were just talking about the shot. Now, now Coach over here, Coach Hooper, is a distance coach, though. you got to show him how to throw the shot. <laughs> Trying to get Coach Bullard to be a pole vaulter. You think he could be a pole vaulter? <laughs> Absolutely <guess> not. <laughs> now, uh, what about school? Now, your favorite subject and favorite teacher, and I've, and I've already told them they can't uh, pick a football coach, and we haven't let any of them pick a football coach. But your favorite subject, and it could be, even be a different teacher from your favorite subject. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy math. Uh, I'm taking calculus this year. It's pretty hard, but I enjoy it. And then my favorite teacher would have to be Miss Baker. Miss Baker, a very nice person, too. I'm curious about the calculus. Now, Trig's not involved in that, too, is it? Uh, a little bit, but no. A little bit. Really. Of course, you've already had the Algebra two or whatever the subject's called. And uh, the math department at Jackson Christian is very good. I see where you all have a lot of fun. Favorite activity besides going to class at Jackson Christian? Don't say 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, I like w we get an athletic block during the day, and we get a workout, and so that's pretty fun. Yeah. It's a nice break from school. Okay, favorite food? It can be at school or away. Uh, I like chocolate. I'm a big chocolate guy. Oh, man, you love my wife's chocolate pies then. <laughs> the, uh, maybe the coaches ought to – you guys win the state championship, they – they ought to get in together and bake all you kids a chocolate pie. Hey, hey I, we'll make that happen. Yeah, Absolutely. I guarantee you for that. The um, Who has been influential both at school and away from school in your life? Um, Dr. Benton's been pretty influential in my life. Uh, I got uh, My family's good friends with him, so I got to know him pretty well, and he's been really influential. What about sports-wise? Who's influenced you the most? Uh, probably Coach Palmer. Um, just the way that he teaches us about football and about life. Absolutely. You think Dr. Benton needs to come on here one night let me fire some <laughs> questions at him? Yeah, yes, sir. That would definitely be interesting to watch. That would be. And we want you to come, Dr. Benton, and be part of it. Maybe he'll come at halftime of one of our games. Coach Bullard, you got something for our CJ? Uh, I don't have any, uh, any more questions for him, Coach. I, I've – I'm proud of this guy. He, he's dealt with a lot and, and just kept battling and, and kind of 
not really waited his turn. He got to he got some time, but he has uh, waited for a bigger role, and I know he's wanted that, and he's responded well, um, and and put the work in for it. And it's proud. I'm proud to see seniors that um, give so much to the program and and get. You know, it's not all about everybody's playing time and everybody, it, but. You know, it is nice to see um, guys that give their effort and give everything they have for the program. Um, see him doing well in the field this year, and we're proud of him. This young man is what makes coaching fun, is people like him. Now, let's get the other questions out of there. First of all, we your favorite sports movie? Hmm. Um, I like The Blind Side. That's the a good blind, movie. Blind Side. Any particular reason? Is it because Michael Orr could block like you, or you block like Michael Orr? Uh, yes, sir. That's fun to watch. Uh, it is. It is a fun thing to watch. And, of course, one of the other questions, and we always emphasize this because we've got a good school. We do a lot of things right. It's not just academics. We learn how to become better people. We also learn about the Lord. Your favorite Bible verse? Um, I like First Peter 5, 7. That is a great verse and, and a good one. Now, it's your turn to say anything you want to to the football fans, not just the Jackson Christian fans, but there are other people listening. You're being listened to as far away as Kingsport, Tennessee, for sure, because I know who's listening up there, Moose Henry. Hmm. Wow. Um, well, I'd have to say, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad for you all listening to us, and uh, I, I really enjoy the coaching staff here, and that's one of the reasons that I play football is to be around them and learn from them. And so, yeah, we got a, we got a great team. Absolutely. Before we go, let's say you don't play college football. After you go to college, what do you think you're going to be? Um, I would like to be a doctor. I think it would be a good one, don't you, Coach? Absolutely. Any, you want to specialize or be a general practitioner? Um, I like orthopedics. And uh, I got to shadow the surgery over the summer, and I found that really exciting. And so I'd probably lean more towards surgery. Well, that's great. I'm going to give you a person that you need to talk to sometime. Talk to Lance Rowland's mother. You know, she was a point guard at Wayne County, but she is my nurse practitioner under Dr. Gerald White. And she is a very good person, and she knows her stuff. And uh, the uh, great person to talk to. But I'm proud of that. See, these are young men. Every one of them that's come in here has had something great to say. And like I said, we appreciate you coming down because I know you've got a busy schedule. and. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself tonight. Yes, sir. We're going to take a two-minute timeout, a two-minute timeout, and I'm going to tell you what. When we come back, another great young man, Cooper Cantrell, he's a senior also. He's going to be over here with us. But we'll take that two-minute timeout from Hub City Deli on the Jackson Christian Football Recap. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. Hello, I'm Wes Harris with State Farm Insurance. My customers love the fact that they can call me or my team members anytime. So when they're in an accident on the bypass with somebody that doesn't have insurance, or they come out of the grocery store and somebody's backed into their car and has not left a note, or they come home and there's a tree on the roof, or maybe water pouring out their front door, they call a local agent, somebody that they know. So call me, Wes Harris, with State Farm Insurance, located right here on Van Drive in Jackson. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable engine repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there.
We are back with the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show. Let me remind you, we're at Hub City Deli on Pleasant Plains Extended. You can either come off of Pleasant Plains, you can come off Country Club Lane, or you can come off Van Drive. they got the best barbecue brisket around here. Now, last week, and I forgot to ask because I've actually done two shows tonight, and I didn't get a chance to ask them if they have it, they'll have it for like a week, and then they'll bring another specialty sandwich in. The Piggy Sue, if they've got it, two grilled pork chops. The sauce they put on it, they'll fix it up and dress it up any way you want to. It is delicious. In my case, I'm trying to lose weight, but I go ahead and eat both of the grilled pork chops. I don't share. That's how good it is. And you can get other things. You can get chips with it, etc., like that. They've got desserts, the Coke machine. But I'm drinking Diet Coke for all of y'all. I've had a couple of our listeners of football games thought I was drinking real Coke one night, got all over me, and said, Coach, you don't need that. Now, some of the people that bring you Jackson Christian football, and we play at 7 o'clock. Let's emphasize that. Don't be late. Matter of fact, I'd be real early. Cause I got a feeling the parking lot's going to be full Friday night. Is that a fair assessment, guys? Yeah, Coach, it's, it, we're looking forward to a great atmosphere. And, and like you said, I'd, I'd get there early, and I'm going to mention some stuff here in a little bit uh, yep. to give you some details on that. Yeah, when we come back with the coaches part of it, we'll do that. But some of our fine sponsors are – our man's record service, Deaton's Carpet One, Snookum Steakhouse, Kimberly Evans, she's with Hickman Realtors, uh, and Kimberly, a wonderful person. Uh, Lonnie Cobb Auto, Great American Sport, Race Clips, their men's hair salon, Wes Harris State Farm, he brings you the first downs, and also Mitchell's Body Shop with Replay, Southern Family Dentistry, and I left Dynamix to uh, – or dynamics is actually the way it's said. Yes, sir. Uh, and I didn't mean to do that, but physical therapy to last because they do our physical therapy work, don't they? That's our that's our athletic training service. Yeah, and, and those great. guys do a great job. There's a new Jackson location, yeah. which is, is even better for us. Dynamics, what a place to go. I've watched their work. And, you know, uh, I don't know how much in the new time, but oh, we had to take athletic training. We had to take – we had a subject – when I was in college, we had to take taping. It was the whole semester. You mm-hmm. went and practiced taping, and if you were a basketball player, you had to go tape ankles with the baseball team. Baseball players had – we did all kinds of stuff like that. You took the kinesiology, yep. et cetera, like that, and all that stuff. But that is a great course. Now, here is Coach Bullard with another one of our special guests. The only thing I'll say about him, he is a senior that I love to watch play. Coach, you're right. We got senior uh, Cooper Cantrell with us here tonight, and he's been a – He's been a contributor um, for for four years for us, and and does wears a lot of hats, and has played receiver, has played safety, has played corner, um, moves around wherever we need him to go, um, has returned kicks, uh, returned punts, uh, things like that for us, and I've um, known known Cooper for a long time, and coached him for a long time, and and we're proud to have him on the show tonight. Oh, we really are, and Cooper, uh, we we I guess you would be our utility man because. Uh, Walker Ray is the Swiss Army knife because he can do a bunch of stuff, but you do a bunch of stuff. So you got to be a utility man, or we either got to come up with uh, we need something more dynamic because this guy is <laughs> dynamic. I've seen him hit people and cross their eyeballs when he's on defense. He can play offense. Is there a position you can't play? Uh, not really sure. <laughs> uh, I don't think I do very good on like the line. <laughs> I bet you could block now. I don't know. Now, snapping the football turns into a little different situation sometimes. But I bet you could even get in there and block at guard if you had to. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> What's the favorite thing that you do in football? Is it on the offensive or defensive side? Uh, I think the offensive side. I like playing receiver. Push We've got to go a little closer. There, there we go. And Gary was signaling. Is that, I don't, is that I don't better? Want you. Yeah, my peripheral vision. Go ahead and push it almost to your mouth. and we'll. There we go. Now you can talk to it. Is that good? That is very good. Gary's even giving the thumbs up. We know we're good because that's the man right there. I'm, I'm just the mouthpiece. He is the man. And um, you like that? You like the offensive side, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I've seen him put some strokes on people defensively, Coach. Yes, sir. And he, he threw for a touchdown uh, a couple games ago. Beautiful ball that um, that we ran. So, that that was uh, nice. And, he, like I said, he's, he's a talented kid. Um, and plays multiple sports for us. And I won't get into too much of that. I'll let you talk with him about that. But he does a lot for our football program. Well, we might as well address that. How many sports do you play at Jackson Christian? I play two sports, uh, football and basketball. Basketball. Don't play baseball. 
No, sir. You know, I, he looks like he could be a great hitter he, in baseball. He used to play, used baseball, to play baseball, and, and we, the other Cantrell boys, we, we kept them out there, but Coop decided between – uh, and, and just did uh, football and basketball. So well, that's another thing we need to introduce. Now, I got to see Colin play in 2017. Mm -hmm. I was out of town uh, doing, I call them relief efforts. It's really, I was helping a school out that was having a little trouble. We had to straighten some athletic and academic pro program problems out at their school. I did not get to see Corey play. Which one do you play the most like? Uh, I don't think it really either of them. You got your own style. Yeah. I like it. Uh, Self-made man there. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There you go. Did they rough you up since you were the little fella at home? A little bit, yeah. Made you tougher, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, but you love your brothers, though, and I know yes, that. Sir. What about school? Let's talk about school for a minute. The can't pick the coaches, but your favorite subject and your favorite teacher at school outside the coaches. Uh, I say my favorite subject is probably English. My favorite teacher is Miss Baker. Miss Baker, you know, she's had a lot of. I've got to sit in on her class sometime. I mean, I know she's a great person, but I need to sit in on class. I don't teach anymore, but I, I love great teachers, and and people seem to love her. The uh, fun things about the school, it could be anything from senior night to. To, I, I keep wanting to call it chapel, and I know, Coach, y'all don't call it chapel, but that shows you how old I am. What's what's the most fun thing at school for you besides football practice? Uh, say just like getting to be with all my friends every day. And that's a good thing. And, yeah. and at lunch, uh, I know we, one, one of the young men that was in here said, I enjoy being with my friends at lunch so I can eat the food I want and talk to the people I want to talk yeah. to. And that's, that's a good thing. The uh, – School day, of course, is part of it. We turn out athletes. Where you want to go to college? Uh, right now I'm thinking about going to Chattanooga. Chattanooga and future plans after college? Uh, not really sure yet. Not sure yet. whether you want to be an atomic engineer or a, uh astronaut or even a lawyer. I have no clue yet, honestly. Uh, that's fine. You've got plenty of time to make the choices. matter of fact, to be honest with you, I'm not sure anybody really should that first two years of college – Take as many subjects as you can handle and get the basics out of the way, and then your last two years you focus on what you're going to be. I, uh, that's one of the great things to do with that. Favorite play that's happened to you, it can be any of the three years, could be somebody else, could be you while you've been at Jackson Christian. Uh, I'd say the pass play that I did uh, against Columbia Academy. I loved it, too. That was one. Have you gone back and watched it on film? Yes, sir, I have. Okay, and I'll remind people that those games are archived on YouTube with Worthy Road Studios. Now, Coach, I do need to butt into his interview and ask you something. I had this question. I was supposed to ask it earlier, and I'm afraid I'm going to forget it. They're not archived at the school, though, are they? Or can they still go back to the school's Facebook and look at them? Uh, that's a great question. I think you can scroll and, and find them. I'm okay. not 100% on that. I know, like, this show, I can always go back and see it on the page, but I don't know how long it okay. stays up there. With the way information rotates and moves, it may move down. Um, but, no, I, I don't, I'm not 100% on that. Well, the good thing about the Worthy Road ones on YouTube, it's there forever yeah. until, unless YouTube goes out of business. Yeah. Don't think that's going to happen because no. it's, it's a media that's there. And, CJ, what, what do you want with your teammates to accomplish this year? Uh. I just want to uh, – I think we could make a run for the state championship. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. And we've got a big game coming up that we're going to give – we're going to give our 100%, and that's all we can ask out of anybody, right? Yes, sir. And uh, I like the way you young people have turned it on when we – and over the years I've learned you all have gotten better and better at moving on to the next game, and that's, that's a good thing because once it's over, you can watch it, and I know you all do a lot of film work. Matter of fact, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Every one of the players have access to huddle. And you yeah. can watch yourself, but uh, I like it that y'all don't beat yourselves up if you see a mistake. Y'all correct it, don't you? Yes, sir. And uh, now, what about – what do you do for fun that's not sports? Uh, I guess just hang out with my friends and, like, shoot basketball at home. Okay, that's not a bad thing to do. Now, what about favorite sports movie? Uh – I'd say remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. Any particular part of that one you like the best? Uh, not really. It's, 
I just think it's a pretty good movie. It is a great movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to ruin it for anybody else. I happen to know uh, we've had him interviewed for the real Ronnie Sunshine Bass, not really? not the guy that played him in the movie. And uh, the only thing I will ruin for people, he wants me to tell everybody that two things did not happen. One, his hair was not as long. And two, the uh, incident uh, with Bertier did not happen <laughs> either. And uh, that's where Disney took a little liberty. Yep. And uh, those kind of things happen. Now, the um, – how does that being an athlete make you a better person? That's a tough one too. Yeah. These young men do not know these questions when they come in. Uh, I just say it like pushes me to be a better man and teaches me like right from wrong, I guess. Absolutely great things there. Now, and we talked about attitude with CJ too. Attitude and chemistry, how important is that to y'all's team? I think it's very important because if we don't have a good attitude, we're just all going to fold and not or like blame each other and point fingers, and that never turns out good. Absolutely. Now, your favorite Bible verse? Uh, I'd say Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Another good one. And uh, we have good taste in Bible verses. The whole Bible's good. And I'm not saying that one's better than the other, but each one has a special meaning to you, doesn't it? Yes, sir. That's what I like. Isn't it? Now, we have a tradition here, and let me check the time. That tells me if I've left a question out, too, by checking the time. Anything you want to say, it's your turn to say it, not just to the Jackson Christian fans, as I told CJ. We know that you're being listened to in Kingsport, Tennessee, because Moose Henry, who used to be a big-time athlete up there, is listening, and Moose is a friend of mine. I would almost bet because they listen to every football game. Coach Palmer's parents are probably listening. But just anything you want to say or, or give some advice, if you want to, to the younger people coming on. Uh, come out and support this Friday. we got a big game. It's going to be a good crowd. And we're going to give it our 100%. Yes, sir. And I know I don't use 110%, but people, after going through certain classes and working with, with young people, they're always trying to give 100%. 110 technically is impossible. <laughs> we That's a motto. I've got a bunch of those give 110% signs. But if we give our 100%, Coach, you and, and uh, Cooper, we're going to be all right. Right, Cooper, if we give our 100%. Yes, we are. It'll take care of itself on the field. Absolutely. Absolutely. Either one of y'all got anything else you want to tell? I and mean, we've got some great listeners out there. But uh, I'm get, I, don't, I think I got it. You ready for Friday? I can look. He's got a gleam in his eye. You're ready for Friday night, aren't you? Yes, sir. Proud of you, son. That's the kind of folks we work with. Good people, good coaches, a great school. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. We're going to put the coaches back together, and we're going to tell you about the upcoming game. Coach Bullard's got some special information, and maybe we can talk. Coach Hooper into being a pole vaulter since <laughs> Coach Bullard says he doesn't want to be. We're going to take that two-minute timeout from the Hub City Deli here on Pleasant Plains Extended. Southern Family Dentistry's dental laser technology is a game changer for those who experience dental anxiety. Just imagine, no more drills. Look at some of Dr. Nathan Nash's patient results. We provide a relaxing environment to ensure a pleasant visit every time. From a simple cleaning to a full dental reconstruction. And now, prepless veneers. We're there when you need us. Dr. Nathan Nash will treat your family just like he wants his family treated. Check them out on Facebook to see all those loving smiles. Call 300-4545. Southern Family Dentistry, we want to make you smile. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Oh. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. For your surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Wes Harris in Jackson today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warranty on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. We are back for the final segment of the Jackson Christian football wrap-up show. And we appreciate Hub City Deli and all of our sponsors. But very sad thing. I'm going to take the opening part of it. The other night, not scouting as a coach, but as a broadcaster to get prepared, I saw two teams that had lost people. I'm going to speak, and you coaches may not know, but FACS lost a player last week too. A uh, young man that was playing on the football team, and uh, it was tough circumstances. And then, of course, the guy that's the same age I am, Tommy Browder, uh, and it really shocks because I'm 70, Tommy was 70, and um, we started coaching about the same time. I was in basketball up at, in Kingsport when Tommy started, but uh, and then came back here and did a little football. But Coach Bullard's going to take the lead on this one. Oh uh, yeah, we we had got that news uh, last week and and immediately reached out to their program and, and sent our condolences and and we still um, there in our thoughts and our prayers and rivalry aside, football aside, uh, you never want player teenagers uh, to have to deal with something like that and I know we had a lot of good friends on that staff and and we are uh, we still we we share that uh, sentiment of of sending them our condolences and. Um, they were mentioned and talked about a lot and, and prayed for uh, from our side of the of the um, coin. So it, that's that's tough. And and when you put yourself in in their shoes and you know dealing trying to get kids through that, and they suited up and played Friday. And um, so we just send them our condolences. Absolutely, and I know go to her for seconds that, but it, it's a tough. I'm gonna get off that and we'll get back to football. It is tough. I've been through it as a coach had two young ladies who had had their best basketball game coming to open gym the next day. They weren't old enough to drive. Grandmother's car got clipped in the back by a another vehicle, threw it over into the lane, and they hit a tractor-trailer rig head-on. And uh, Two of the toughest funerals I ever had to go to in my life because I'm going to say something. I hope nobody objects to what I say, and my apology if you do. Uh, players ought to be bearing coaches when we get old, not coaches bearing players. Young people, please drive safely. Parents, encourage it. And then some things can't be helped. At least Tommy and I reached age 70, and that's a good thing. And I'm, hopefully he's thankful to the Lord like I am for every day that I get up and can breathe if I can do the Lord's work, and you should too. Now, coaches, let's switch. First of all, we've got a game coming up. Coach, you've got some special information people need to know. Yeah. We, uh, and I'm going to go to my phone here just so I make sure I get it right. Um, starting at 5 o'clock on Friday, uh, we're going to have a school-wide tailgate party. Um, so bring your chairs, blankets, anything you want to bring, your friends, your food. Uh, there's going to be a snow cone truck out there. There's going to be face painting. There's going to be the football team's going to do an eagle walk. The band, the cheerleaders going to perform, and, and we're going to try to kick that night off right um, out at 5 o'clock down there uh, by the lower elementary playground. We would love to see as many people as we can out there, kids playing, uh, folks just getting together and celebrating uh, what's hoped to be a good night of football. And we got a lot of talented kids, and we'll get our band involved, cheerleaders involved, and, and we're thankful for the people trying to put this on and um, 5 o'clock. So, and it might be a good idea to get there that early um, Friday. So <coughs> it, we're looking forward to a big crowd and a, just a great night of football. Coach Herber, you got anything to add to that? Uh, no, I, th I think just echoing what he said, you know, last couple of home games we've been pretty packed out, and I think this one, uh, just being in the city of Jackson, both both city schools, I, I think it's going to be a, a electric crowd. I'm looking forward to it, and then you better get there early. Well, I'm going to put Coach Hooper on the spot a little bit. Band competition at South Gibson High School, and uh, the band plays first in band, guard, and percussion, third overall in visual, sixth overall in music, guard, and percussion. I say we've got the best small band in America. Oh, yeah, I, I would definitely agree. Uh, we, we got a lot of uh, kids that have, have really invested in this and this new band director and, and really come out. And, uh, you know, she's done a great job with this, the pep band. 
uh, playing songs with the fan participation, and, and I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it a whole lot. Uh, they, they're out there practicing all hours of the day and night, and, uh, but they do a great job uh, in, in what they do. Coaches, let's remind the people that we got two middle school games this week, Tuesday and Thursday night. Tuesday night's at home, Thursday night's on the road. Y'all correct me anything that I mess up. The elementary team uh, also plays this week, don't it's they? Thursday at home, yes, sir. Okay, and we did not have a JV game to answer a couple of y'all that have texted me during the show this week, but we've got some more JV games. I believe we have a JV game coming up Monday. Monday. I uh, thought we had one coming yes, up. Okay, now I'm going to kind of let you two do most of the talking. We've got a big game, and let's not dilly-dally around, fans. It's a big game. First of all, Coach Hooper said it right. We're in the same town. It, I'm sure other teams in this town, their game is big to them. This probably is the biggest game in Madison County. Let's just expand it to that. could be biggest game. Two schools that, one, are fighting for first place in the region. Two, uh, we respect each other, but we don't necessarily – get along all the time, and that's the way it is in sports. And we're competitive. And what do we need to know about this football game coming up Friday night? I'm going to echo what you said. It, it's the biggest game of the year because it's our next one. And we try to approach everything that way um, and, and just trying to keep an even kill mindset, knowing that um, there will be a lot of energy, a lot of emotion, a lot of things going on, a lot of adrenaline pumping in that game. Um, but you know we we got to we got to treat it like another game and a, another opportunity to go two and zero in the region, um, and and we want to we're we're proud to be in this opportunity, proud to be uh, playing in this game. But uh, we, we got to keep our minds focused and, and just do us. If we take care of us and we execute our game plan, um, we we know that that we can compete with anybody, and that's our mindset. Um, whether it's whether it's USJ, whether it's anybody, that's that's what we're going to go do. We're going to go take care of us and, and let the chips fall where they may. Coach Hooper, your thoughts? I think just to echo what Coach Bull said, you know, just, just keep an even kill as much as possible, kind of what I said earlier with our guys. Uh, stay in the course, trusting our responsibilities, trusting all 11 to do what they're supposed to do, um, and just, just playing assignment football. It's not anything big or small. It's just doing your job, uh, not building this up to be more than what it is. It's still a game. It's still meant to be have fun. Uh, we want to win. We want to get after them. Uh, but really, it's because they're the next opponent on the schedule. Absolutely. And let me throw a word at both of you. Either one of you or both of you can deal with it. How important is the word discipline on Friday night of this week? It is every week. But this week especially, how important is that word? I, I think the, the, the main, when you, when you say that, the main thing that comes to my head is the pain of uh, discipline or the pain of regret. I think you have to do do what we're supposed to do every play, and you can't think about what happened in the past. You, there's going to be plays they're going to make. There's going to be plays we're going to make. You just got to watch and go to the next play and do your job every every single play until the end of the game. <clears throat> do it right. Do it that way every time, and be consistent is a definition I was given by. A coach one time about discipline. What you just described, would you all say that that is the rest of discipline? If we can do it right every time, you know, uh, you know, it may not be a big gainer, may even be a loss, but making the effort to do it right in the long run, the team that does it right the most will get there. Absolutely. Gentlemen, you know what time it is. Final comments from both of you. Coach uh, Buller, we'll let you go first. Yes, sir. We, we uh, once again, thank Hub City for having us out. Um, I, I hope this is something people are enjoying and, and we can continue to do it. But um, we, we want to have a, a great crowd um, tomorrow night if possible. Um, I know it's going to be a little, little wet, but we'd love to celebrate those guys and uh, get, a, get out to our elementary game on Thursday. And then, and then let's wrap up a, a great week of football uh, Friday night in, in what could be a, a great atmosphere. And, and hopefully our team will – will show up and, and do what do what we've coached them to do and, and what we worked on all week, and, and they'll perform. And, and we trust them. We, this team does does go out and, and do what we ask. And um, we just, like I said a little bit ago, you, you, you get the hay in the barn, and then you then you got you to gotta go out and play. So we've we got a couple more days to work, um, and we're excited about this opportunity Friday. Absolutely. Coach, your final statement. Uh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm looking forward to uh, our kids executing the game plan. They've done a great job all year. That's why we've had the success we've had. We've had a great group of kids uh, come out and support our kids. Uh, you know, they, they, they work hard. They bust their tail all this offseason uh, through the summer and, and to now. You're only given so many opportunities. 
Uh, you know, the season has gone in a flash. So, so coming out this Friday, uh, support them. I, d I did want to say uh, I told Coach Wyatt I'd give Flo a shout out. What's up, Flo? <laughs> uh, and then uh, my my wife and kids at home, uh, Brittany, uh, Bryce, Logan, and Hunter. Uh, I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in a minute. So. And we, Coach, we want you to come back. I've already had a text that said we want. They expect you to be here. Uh, it said I expect Coach Buller. They want you to come back. Will you come back one night? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be back. I'll and uh, I, matter of fact, they told me they had some questions for you. Now I do worry about that sometimes. But fans, that's what it's all about. Come out here and see these young men. And I know I've had some of you say, "Well, can we talk to the young men?" Sure, they will. They're great guys. They'll. Uh, if you want to get an autograph off of uh, one of them, I know uh, the first show we had here, actually one of the young men got his picture took. There was somebody over there. I don't know whether his grandparents, but they're friendly young men. They're very, very nice. And the coaches, they would do the same thing. And I'm looking forward, though, to when I can say it's football time at Jackson Christian School at Ronnie Fowler Field because Friday night is one game of the story. It is important. We'll play 60 minutes of important football, and then we'll get ready for the next opponent because we don't have the easiest schedule in the state of Tennessee. But we've got fine young men, fine coaches, the administration of the school, and I think as good a booster club as you could have. They, uh, uh, and I'm going to give Shane a little kudos, Shane Cisco, and although the best thing Shane done is sent Will to play and sent uh, Zach now to kick the football. And Shane knows I'm, I'm just jabbing at him a little bit. We appreciate all of you listening. And like I said, Darby's parents a lot of times are listening out of town from over in Arkansas. And David Sisko, who's councilman, uh, he, I know he's listening. Some people let me know that they are. Um, I'm going to get me a second phone because some of our fans have asked. They want a phone that I can give my number out. But my number has leaked out a little bit anyway. Gentlemen, it was great. Fun, two great coaches a great school and great players, and I just get to be part of it, and I thank the good Lord every night that Jackson Christian allows me to be part of their great atmosphere. Thanks to Gary Lockhart over there, who has become my great compadre on all the Jackson Christian broadcasts. I love him to death. We love you, the fans. Be there, and you can watch it on your iPhone or Android phone, and if you miss any part of it, Worthy Road Studios will have it, YouTube for you, but that school website and the Facebook of the Booster Club. And our game's on 93.1 on the radio. Yes, sir. It will be. We're going to say any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. Thanks for your time this time. Till next time, good night, all. <laughs>